Psalms chapter 10. <clears throat> Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? And that sounds like it's true. But it's not God hiding. This is not his time. God hears us. But we want God to answer right away. And we think when he doesn't answer, he's not listening to us. Or, I mean, you imagine God on a task somewhere where he can't hear his creation. Impossible. The wicked, and we're going to go into one of the problems of life. The wicked, in his pride, does persecute the poor. And that's true. And that's every age. Pride is a sin. It's never should be of a Christian, and it's never of God. So the wicked are proud to lavish upon the poor. Let them be taken in devices that they have imagined. You know, let them get what they deserve. Let them, you know, God's not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. Let it turn on to them. Now, that's not the Christian taught by Jesus and the apostles. We're to love our neighbors. We're to help them to do evil to us. And Psalms sometimes let them have it. The wicked boasts, again, that's a prideful word, of his heart's desire. And blesses, the wicked blesses the, the covetous whom the Lord of Doris hated. Imagine that, God hating something. The wicked just brag about sin. That's what it's saying. They brag about iniquity. And God hates it. Someone would think that God don't hate anything. God is just a loving, smooth kind of God. That, you know, God hates the sin, loves the sinner. Well, what is the sin without the sinner? Think about that. If God hates the sin and loves the sinner... What is the sinner doing? He's sinning, which God hates. The wicked, through pride, <laughs> through the pride, there's the pride again, of his countenance, how good he looks, how well he looks. The countenance, you know, it's that special of your face. They say you walked in a room, they're going to have, they had a surprise party for you. You know, wow, you know, think about the face. Think about your face when you, you're in a hospital room and a, and a loved one has just died. What would be your face? What would be your face if you're in a restaurant and somebody spilt coffee on you? What would your face? That's what countenance means. Will not seek after God. God is not in their thoughts. Well, that's wicked. You know, one of the things we get with the public ministry is, you know, keep it in the church. Why? You're not going to come to the church. And we live in a day and age today. Okay, maybe back in the days when I grew up as a child and as a teenager, maybe a young adult, you know, your friend would invite you to say, hey, you know, I'm getting married in the church. And you had a proper Baptist preacher that the Bible would preach salvation with the wedding ceremony. And then sometimes you would get a church like we just did the memorial for my wife. My pastor got up and did a great message about salvation. We had one child get saved. All right, that's good. People are not getting married in churches anymore. People are not getting are having funerals in churches anymore. Church is the last thing on there. That's one of the marks of, of the age where the wickedness of the lad is seen church age. It's not happening in church no more. I mean, it's nonsense. They don't even think about God. They don't want the God. They don't want a guilty conscience. Oh, maybe God knows. Maybe God will. I don't want you to want to think about God. That's why God says, go in the world and preach the gospel. Because they're not thinking about it. Now, yeah, like us with, with the farmer's market, the vendors know us week after week after week for six years now. But what about the people who just showed up for the very first time or has not been there when we've been there? What about when they show up and they hear Jesus? What is that? Some of those people never heard of Jesus. 
Then there's some people there who hear Jesus every week and they don't want they don't want to hear it. His ways are grievous. The wicked. Thy judgment, God's judgments are far above, above out of his sight. God will not throw anybody into hell. Today we got cues of you know preaching about hell is hate speech. Hate, hate. You're always preaching hate. Yeah, because God hates you. God don't hate me. Get right. Get in the book. Become a Christian. Live right. And then you'll see, hey, you know what? It's not hate. It's right. As for all his enemies, he puffes at them. Poof. You're going, poof. He has said in his heart, the, wick, the wicked, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. God is never going to do anything to me. I am going to be who I am, what I am. That's pride. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. It does nothing give under his tongue and mischief and vanity. Well, that's a that's a very great verse to give to somebody. Some people would get offended if you use if you use that verse or use those words against them today. But that's what a lot of wicked men are. He sitteth in the lurky places of the villages you know, where you can't be seen places where it's not really much people it's dark you have to no good in secret places does he murder the innocent that's because that's the first time murder shows up that's the definition of murder killing the innocent and there's two definitions, thou shalt not kill, and there's the kill of thou shalt not kill, the murder. And then there's an accidental death. That's not murder. His eyes are privily, the wicked, set against the poor. And we've already read about that verse too. The poor are a, a target of the prideful. The poor is the target of the wicked. And how's the Antichrist going to get his revenge? Is if you're not going to receive that mark, you're not you're going to be poor. You can't do nothing. The Bible says no man shall buy or sell without the mark in the tribulation period. There is no middle class people in the tribulation. You're either mark class, you got the mark and you can do whatever you want to do. Or you're the unmarked class and you can't do what you want to do. And that's where Jesus says, woe unto the women that give suck and woe to the women that pray. Because in order to take care of that child, you're going to have to get the mark if you want formula. And a mother's love, that will destroy the woman that takes the mark. He lieth in wait Secretly as a lion, First Peter 5, 8 says, Our adversary the lion goes about seeking who he may devour in his den. He lies in wait to catch the poor. Again, the poor. He does catch the poor. Again, the poor, which he draws into his net. <laughs> a lion don't lay a net, but here's a lion. A net is laid, but here's a lion set in the net. This is the devil. And who's he got marked? The poor people. Oh, the oppression of the poor, the oppression of the poor. Oh, high taxes. The government is bringing us down. That's Bible. How do you describe your loving Democrats and your Republicans and whatever other politician titles are? You're wicked. That's what it is. He crotches and humbles himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Those people that are working with him. Strong laws. Strong interests. Strong fees. However he can destroy the poor. 
Jesus said, take my yoke upon. You know why he said, take my yoke upon? Because the religious people of the time of the Jews with Jesus were putting much burdens on the people. You have to wash your hands before you eat. You couldn't even rub wheat together on the Sabbath. That was illegal. That's not in the Bible. That wasn't in the law. He has said in his heart, God has forgotten. He, God, hides his face. He will never see it. And he forgets the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good. The wicked man, when he deceives people, when he does his duty, his dirty duty deeds, he doesn't care about God. He, he doesn't even think about God. When he rips somebody off, God is, is far from his thoughts. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to give an account in judgment one day of what I'm deceitfully doing. No, he doesn't even care. Arise. He said, I want that word means when it comes, O oh Lord. Second Advent. Arise, O oh Lord, O oh God. Lift up thy hand. Forget not the humble. <laughs> Lord, forget... Lord God, we're, we're getting it. We're being nailed. We're being crucified. We're being tortured. We're being, oh, Lord, we need your help. The tares are overwhelming the wheat. Wherefore does the wicked condemn God? He has said in his heart, he doesn't say out loud, that will not require it. Again, I already said that. When a wicked deceives or robs or steals or kills, or whatever he does to somebody else, God don't care. That's why you got to send a, a preacher and a Bible to prison. Because those guys that are in prison, they were not looking for a Bible, not looking for a preacher, or they would not be in prison. That's why you go out in the streets and preach the gospel. They're not, they're, listen, they're not thinking about God in their business. And like I said, we go to a farmer's market every week now for six years. And we're preaching God, and I guarantee there are people there when they're hearing Jesus are deceiving the people. While Jesus is being preached, while they're doing their dirty deeds business. And they don't care that Jesus is being preached at the ear saw of their ear. And pff, there's no God who cares. That guy's a phony. He's a liar. He don't know what he's talking about. The Bible. There's no Bible. There's no God. Uh, yeah, and then he deceives the people. I'm not fooled. Just because I preach Jesus doesn't mean the whole place is holy. I'm not fooled. Thou hast seen it, God. For thou beholdest mischief and spite to requite it with thy hand. You're going to get paycheck. And poor committeth himself unto thee, you God. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. And we again run that into Job. Job was Job proclaimed to be a judge of the widows and the fatherless and to override those that were doing deceit and wrong to the to the poor. So it's God. You say, well, God, I'll tell you what. I'm saved. Man, I lived check to check. I, I tried to do right. I didn't blow my money in stupid things. And even if I did, but Lord, you know I tried to do right, but this, you know, the laws, the taxes, and and interest, and I couldn't get ahead. I didn't get a proper hourly rate to, to, to survive. And I'm in glory now, but God, but all that suffering on, on earth. Prepare for the great white throne judgment for those that did do it. They will get there. Listen, if, if the Bible speaks about an employer treating his employee properly. And if he don't, he'll have to give it account. The Bible speaks about, you know, you're supposed to have a, a just, fair system of weights. And if they don't, God calls it an abomination. They're going to have to give an account. Break thou the arm of the wicked. There's the Antichrist again. His right eye, his right arm. His right eye goes black. His right arm gets busted. And the evil man. 
Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. <laughs> Picture that as a judgment. When a man walks away from the great white throne judgment or is cast off in the lake of fire, that guy has to give an account for everything. In Matthew 12, it says, every idle word shall give an account thereof. You better be thankful that when the great white throne judgment comes, time has ended. We are in the eternal life right then and there. Because I don't know how long it would take if there was time, because there is no time, to judge every man from Adam. And I know Adam's going to be at the great white throne judgment. I don't know. I believe his name will be in the books, but Adam's not in the church age. So you take from Adam to, all right, let's say, let's say the rapture of the church happened now. We got seven years tribulation. All right, we go into 2027. The tribulation period's over. Then you got 3027. Thousand year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you, and okay, now let's take 4,000 years of the Old Testament. I think 4,000. Yeah. 7,000 plus years of men and women. Minus the church age of church of Christian saints. Christians go up in the rapture and they go up to the judgment seat of Christ. So anybody who was not a Christian, not in the church age, Everyone's going to be at the Great White Throne Judgment, and their name may be in the Book of Life, and they will get off in the glory if their name's in the book. But think about all the people from Adam for 7,000 years. And it says Adam had a son. His name was, uh, was uh, uh, Abel. His name was Cain. His, name, his son was Seth. All right. Okay, that sounds good. But Adam had other sons and daughters. How many? I'll have to give it a count. Enos gave birth, I forget who he gave birth to, and he has sons and daughters. And then uh, Japheth gave birth, and he had sons and daughters. And Ham gave birth, and he had sons and daughters. Listen, those guys lived 900 years. I wonder how many children they had. I wonder how many children not listed in the book of Chronicles that are brothers and sisters to the names of people we listed. All the Philistines, all the Egyptians, all the Babylonians, all the people of Nineveh. And there are going to be people at Nineveh at the Great White Throne Judgment are going to go in. Because Jesus said they repented at the preaching of Jonah. What about the other Ninevites? All right. What about all the people of France, England, Germany? America, both Native America and present United States today. I don't, and president's not president. All the people of Mexico, all the Incas, all the Chinese. Man, you better be thankful that in Great White Throne Judgment, there's no wristwatch. Wow, we've been here four times and we still got much more people to go. When you sing in the Amazing Grace, when we've been there for 10,000 years, there is no 10,000 years. There is no time. It's a cute little song. Yeah, a cute little song with no Jesus. And many of your hymns don't have Jesus. Oh, how did I get off on that one? Break off the army of wicked. Verse 16. All right, ready? Ready? Ready, Jehovah Witness? Is Jesus coming to Jerusalem? Yes. Is he going to be king? Yes. Okay. The Lord is, look at that capital K. Who's the Lord in the Old Testament? It's the king. You're wrong. Meh. Gabriel, you will tell our contestants where they go next. <laughs> Lake of fire. Bye. What can you get more? Is God king? No, he's not king. God's never a king. The Lord is king. Jesus Christ is king. Jesus Christ is capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. You haven't studied your Bible. I don't know. I would love to see maybe what uh, the New World Translation. Forever and ever. Just, just in case you didn't get it the first time. Forever and ever. How long is that? Ever. 
See? No time. No minutes, no seconds, no months, no weeks, no years. Ever. How do you describe eternity in New Jerusalem? Ever. The heathen are perished out of his land, Israel. That happens all the time. That happens at the second advent when he judges the nation's goats. Lord, thou has heard the desire of the humble. They're praying to you, Lord God. To, to, Look back to verse one again. Lord, why are you hiding from us? That's true for the tribulation period. God is really, God is taking his spirit away, but he's not hiding. He sends Moses and Elijah. So he's not even hiding then. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause their ear to hear. That sure was not the first advent. Jesus said they have ears to hear, but they hear not. To judge the fatherless as Job and the oppressed like Job did, that the man of the earth, population or may no more oppress. There's coming a time when there will be no more oppression, no more wicked, no more pride. Right now, the tares are winning. And Jesus said one day he's going to send the angels first, gather the tares. Bind them up and throw them into the fire. Then let's get the wheat. 